Silk is nature's most extraordinary wonder because of its unique qualities silk is often referred to as the queen of fibers through history silk and royalty have been synonymous some of the unique qualities of silk include gentle to the skin silk is moisture absorbent silk is heat resistant it does not burn easily absorbs ultraviolet rays and thus protects the skin it is unique even with the recent advancement in science, silk cannot be easily synthesized. And above all, silk products and fabrics attract good prices on the world market because its demand is always bigger than the supply. Coming up on Seeds of Gold. In terms of the silk worm, we are having two types. We have the body vitile and the modified. This is a body vitile type. Silkworm farming, also known as sericulture, is the rearing of silkworms to produce silk. The silkworms, which are in the caterpillar classification, only feed on leaves from one particular plant called the mulberry. Syed Mohammed is an Iranian investor in Uganda. In partnership with the government of Uganda, Syed has embarked on the journey to revamp the silkworm farming industry in Uganda. His vision is to see Uganda becoming among the leading silk producers in the world, expecting to contribute revenue of 155 billion shillings annually. In our farm, start in 2011, now it's almost eight years. During the eight years activity, we plant over three million mulberry plants in different variety. Every season we can plant over 2 million new mulberry trees. By the way, after this first rain, as you have seen the area we plow, we are going to plant 2 million new mulberry through the same stem which we have here. Worldwide, the silk production today, 200,000 metric ton of the yarn. 175,000 metric tons produced by China and created 2 trillion US dollars of the business in China just through the, this white diamond. This business in China is seasonal, means during the years Chinese cannot produce every month because of the climate, rainfall, and the season. In India, today, out of the 200,000 ton, they are producing 23,000 metric ton. 7.5 million labor in 53,000 village of India engage in the silk production. But uh, in Uganda, this business of the silk culture has some background. Ministry of Agriculture and the government of Uganda started the business of the silk culture from 1992. In 2011, when I have seen that this opportunity in Uganda, the climate and then land opportunities and then labor opportunities, I tried to develop this business in our farm with the cooperation of the Ministry of the Agriculture, especially our dear friend, Madame Christine, from the Kawanda Research Center and the other colleagues. Popular varieties of the mulberry plant include Pakistan mulberry from Islamabad, Pakistan, very large fruit up to 3 to 12 inches in length, sweet fruit with firm flesh, Kolia, hybrid cross of the white and red mulberry, purple fruit with sweet flavor. Russian from China, reddish black fruit on a tall and drought resistant tree, often grown for wildlife or windbreaks. Illinois Everbearing, hybrid cross of the white and red mulberry, black, very sweet and large fruit from a vigorous and productive tree. Riviera, 
Purple black, very sweet and long ripening. Conditions that support the growth of the mulberry tree include excellent climate of temperatures ranging between 20 and 30 centigrade throughout the year. Good fertile loamy soils, these are found in most parts of Uganda. Sufficient rainfall of averages between 700 mm to 1250 mm annually. The mulberry garden has to be established during the rainy season. You have to get good quality mulberry cuttings that are planted according to recommended practices. And the soils have to be given fertilizers or manure to, to give the initial nutrition that the mulberry requires. Then you have to follow the planting, the spacing which can be three feet by three feet or five feet in between the lines. Then after the mulberry has uh, got established, one has to do weeding to make sure it is free of weeds. Then after six months, a farmer is able to harvest. But at that time, the yield is not sufficient enough for feeding. It goes on improving as the mulberry gets established. Around two years, two, three years, that's when uh, the mulberry garden can be able to feed. We usually recommend for farmers to have one to two acres of mulberry. But uh, for large scale farmers, they can have as many acres of mulberry as they want. During planting, consider a spacing of at least three feet apart. Fertilize with composite and mulch to keep the soil evenly moist. Prone young trees to develop strong structured branches. Mulberry have a few pests other than birds making it easy for a farmer. We usually recommend uh, to cut the mulberry for planting at the uh, uh, age of uh, six to eight months. So you make sure when you are pruning, uh, you don't prune uh, at the ground. You leave at least uh, 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 one foot from the ground and then you, you can cut this. Around here, this is... So we cut it like this, so that it doesn't, uh, when it rains, it can be uh, attacked by bacteria and then it can dry. So when you sharp it like this, water will not sink in, in the, in the maribale. So you, you make sure when you look at this maribale, it has these buds. So this is around one foot, and then you count these buds, one, two, three, then you cut here. Yeah? One, two, three, the fourth you can cut. So when it comes to planting, as you heard from Madame Asaba, you must measure three by three, and then in between it will be the row, which is five. So three by three, you can even use your ordinary. If a farmer does not have a foot, he can use like this, and then he measures one, two, and then three. So, find that here and here, this is the spacing for the mulberry. So as here it is very, very hard, we can dig a bit and then, because this, this, we recommended that the soil must be tilled. So you make sure that you look at these buds and these buds must face up so that it can it can shoot. Mulberry will start yielding leaves to feed the silkworms within four to six months. Since it is a perennial and not a seasonal crop, every two to three months mulberry leaves can be harvested from the same stems to feed the silkworms continuously.
the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and Animal Industry through the Department of Entomology are promoting the silkworm enterprise in Uganda. It has established a sericulture center in Kawanda, Wakiso district. At the center, silkworm farmers can access information, trainings, advisory services, silkworm eggs, and mulberry cuttings if they are to start venturing in this enterprise. An interested farmer, you need to have land. Then, for planting materials, we can provide. Okay, we usually provide planting materials. We have a mother garden at Kawanda National Agriculture Center, and our function is to provide mulberry planting materials. But even we have other regional centers in the district, some that have also mulberry. If you are very far from Kawanda, you can still get from your nearby district. Then, for establishing a rearing house, the standard recommended measurements are 30 feet by 20 for a rearing house that can accommodate 40,000 silkworms. After that, you can get the training so that you get the skills. Silkworm rearing is a very technical activity. So one has to be trained fast to get the skills. Then you can go ahead and start rearing. We provide you with silkworm eggs or silkworms. Then another thing we encourage is to form a group, say in your village, in a cluster form, so that you can work together in a group and be assisted. So you need some money for constructing and also buying rearing equipment, the spinning frames, or spinning mabushi, the spraying pumps, and uh, the disinfectants. After acquiring silkworms in the egg state from Kawanda, they should be brought to a well-constructed and ventilated shelter where they are kept and fed in stages for 24 days. At this stage, the silkworms will be then ready to a cocoon, which is used in silk production. In terms of the silkworm, we are having two types. We have the bolivetyl and the motivated. This is a bolivetyl type. The motivated, those are the ones which are giving in different colors. But this one, you have to be assured of. This type only gives us white cocoon. Yes. A cocoon, this is the ending is out of a silkworm. When it gets mature, it builds its house. Yes. Like any other insect, this also undergo computer circle. But what is the difference here? It's the insta. The first insta from the egg session to cover up the, the first insta, it takes two days. After two days, it undergo the moting session. That's we call it when it is a sleep, it's dormant. During that process, it has to, to shed off the old skin to allow one an, another young skin, which will allow it to expand its body. So that's it, we keep it, we feed it for two days, then it sleeps for two days, depending on the weather. When it's very hot, it can sleep for one one hour and a half, but when it's very cold, it's safe. It can sleep for two days. So from that one, we go to the second insta. It does the same. Only the instas which are different, that the fourth and the fifth. The fourth one, we feed it for four days. Again, it undergo moting for two days. Imagine to a fifth insta which we feed it for eight days. Then it make a cocoon. But this one are in the fifth stage. It's only remaining with six days to make a cocoon. So this one, it's in the fifth stage. No any other mounting, no any other sleeping. Only it eats to cocooning only. This one, it's in the third insta, it's emerging into the fourth insta. Now here it's under a sleep, it's sleeping. How would, you, how would we determine that this one is a sleep? You can see, we people, we put on the pillow. It's raising its head, like in a form of making a pillow. And when it is asleep, always their mouths become are very piercing. It's very thick, thin. You can see this one. This one has, has become awake now. You can see that mouth is becoming big. Even this one is awake. 
but this one which is still in the acid, it's completing its second day. We will feed them tomorrow. This is the third instant now. We pour this lime to make this wasted food getting dry. Why do we do it? If all of this gets dry, once the caterpillar was down, it will again still receive the air saturation to allow its, its body, the old body, to shave off. Now from like this one, this is on the fourth insta. It has to imagine to what a fifth insta. You can see the size are still what small. The other one has been a fifth one. This has to again to imagine to the fifth insta. So this one still has to undergo another sleeping. This is the one which is in the second insta. You can see the size is very small. This is the one in the first insta. For them, they are still consuming. So this one has to undergo another free constant molting. Yep. Uh -uh, these are not sleeping. Like we, like we are having a kid. You give the kid food, sometimes you can rest a bit that let me first leave the other food to go down. Then it eats again. The use of this water is to put, prevent to stop those insects which would have climbed up to consume on this silky worm. So whatever insect which comes across here, it will end there. No any other continuity. Because even if you leave the door open, like this cats, rats, hens, turkey, all can consume on it. Yeah. From Kawanda? Yes. Pick them in what stage? After the cocooning has been processed, has been made. That we call it a larva stage. Yeah, from larva stage, automatically it will merge into a pupate stage. From a pupate stage, it will merge into a morphe, which you call a butterfly. So that butterfly, for us, we can select the female and the male. We put it in a gazetted area. They mate for 10 hours. That's how their fertilization takes place. After 10 hours, we do separate them. Leaving the female, we put it aside in the area which is going, where it's going to make the eggs from. Each female giving us 500 eggs. After that done, now the male has done, has completed the job. Automatically you put it somewhere, it dies. As a butterfly? As a butterfly. It cannot, fall, it cannot fly because it's lazy. After those 24 days, we add on the seven day, it will be 31 days. That's the ending result of that what? Caterpillar. After those eggs are being layered, we pick them, we treat them. How do we do the treating? The cashier of the egg is very hard. Unless when you've treated it, we treat it using two chemicals, acid and formalin, to make that shell of that egg very soft, to allow it what? To ash. After the silkworms have constructed the cocoon, they are left to die off as the cocoon is harvested and processed into silk yarn, which is used as raw material in textile industry. So this is a post-harvest processing project. So when we are processing silk yarn, we first boil the cocoons, the harvested cocoons, we boil them because when the worm is making the cocoon, it uses a lot of gum. So because it is going to a, a pupa stage, so in that pupa stage, it is dormant, it can't move, so it makes that foundation. That foundation, it is full of seed, the cocoon. That white thing you see there down, it is a white, a full of silk. So to, to remove that silk, we, have, we first boil it to dissolve the gum. If you don't dissolve the gum, then you can't remove the thread. So after boiling them, we bring them here for reading. This is a reading machine. In, on reading, we combine the number of cocoons according to the size of the filament we want to make, the size of the thread. If you want to make uh, the size of a uh, thread of making a tie or a sat, it has to be fine, it has to be the small. That size we call it dinia. So there are different dinias of making the fabric. So those different fabric dinias, we combine a number of, of cocoon according to the, the, the size of the dinia you want to, to use. If you want to use 
a fine denier for making a tie or a cross, we use the like, 10 cocoons, that is a static denier. It is 22 denier. So if you want to make a big size of the denier, we combine something like 40 and above. Carpet it will, can reach even up to 100 cocoons, depending on the type of fabric you want to make. So when you combine those number of filaments, we bring it here to, we put it on a reeling machine. That reeling machine, it is hand reeling machine because some rural areas don't have electric, electricity. So we use hand reeling machine. This is a hand reeling. There are also electric reeling machines. So this is hand reeling machine. It is used in rural areas, so small cottage industries. So this is reeling. We reel the cocoons until they get finished. You remove, you remain with a pupa. That pupa, you can't show it. It also have uh, an other user. You can use it for feeding chicken, fish, and uh, when it is fresh, you can squeeze it and get oil. Cooking oil, you can get Vaseline, and the remaining part, you can use it to make chocolate biscuits. This is the pepper, but this one is fresh. You see, it, is, it has a lot of oil. 99% is oil. It is protein. So it is good for feeding chicken and fish. So after getting this yarn, you can also, you can also make some clothes. Because you can't stop here. You can make uh, bags like these ones. This is raw sick. You can gum. After the gumming, then you can spin. When fully processed, silk yarn can easily find market and is highly profitable. It can be exported to textile producing countries such as Japan and Iran. Of course, as a private sector company, we are able to support this project of the silk in the country to the Ministry of Agriculture and Science. And we have capacity with the, this garden to produce a stain for 1,000 acres every season. And we are assuring the Ugandan farmer we are going to supply the enough silk worm for the need of the Farm. Number three is the market. In the market issue, until our capacity in Uganda reached to the some tonnage which can inquire the machine, because we consult with the some companies in Japan to bring the rearing machine from the cocoon to the yarn. They are asking us every hour we supposed to have 500 kilograms of the dry cocoon. 500 kilograms of dry cocoon. Means this is the almost 1,000, three to 500 kilograms of the fresh cocoon. But in the meantime, to not stop the business, as Ugandan farmer can produce the cocoon, we are as Iran Agro Industrial Group, guarantee of the market. We shall buy in cash in Kampala and export to the abroad. That is our duty until the our final processing machine come. Now the price of the international market for the grade A silk yarn out of the modern machinery between 40 to 60 dollars per kilogram. That is the price of the yarn. Still wondering how you can earn from the sericulture enterprise? Here are a few estimates. Processed silk, that is silk yarn from one acre, can fetch 6,192,000 shillings per year. With a hand loom for weaving, a farmer can earn 43.34 million shillings from an acre by selling finished silk cloth. 
For an interested farmer to start on the silkworm farming enterprise, this is what you need. Land of about one acre and above for mulberry planting, constructed structure to shelter the silkworms, the are domesticated creatures, sprayers and disinfectants, well-constructed rearing beds, these can either be wooden or metallic, and most important, do not forget to visit the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and Animal Industry for more training and technical support.